Hi, I am Teacher Daisy. Now, let's learn Form 3 Chapter 3 Consumer Mathematics. In this chapter, you will learn 3.1 Savings and Investments and 3.2 Credit and Debt. First, we go to 3.1 Savings and Investments. What is savings? Saving means excess money. Deposited in the safe, money box, drawer or bank that will provide returns. Based on interest rates and savings periods. Let us look at the situation of Alice. I have excess money. I want to save my money in the bank. What account should I choose? Can anyone help me? Hi, I am David. I can help you. I will explain to you in details. There are three types of accounts in a bank. Number one, saving account. You can save any amount and withdraw the money anytime. The interest is based on the total amount and duration of savings. However, the interest rates is low. You can use debit card to withdraw your money in ATM machine. Number 2. Fixed Deposit Account This is to save your money for a period of time, like 1 month, 3 month, 9 month, 1 year, 2 years and so on. A saving certificate will be issued. Moreover, it has higher interest rate than savings account. However, if you withdraw before the maturity date, your interest will be reduced. Number 3. Current Account Savings can be used for personal or business purposes. May make payment to another people by check. Savings will not be paid interest and need service charges. Account applicant must submit a referral. Who is an existing current account holder at the same bank? Normal withdrawals are usually allowed via debit cards and other channels, for example internet banking and telephone banking. It is an overdraft facility, which means can withdraw money beyond the balance of the deposit, but with interest charges. The benefit of savings is, the interest for savings are rewards paid by financial institutions, for example banks to depositors. There are two types of interest, simple interest and compound interest. Let's have a look at simple interest first. Simple interest is reward given to the depositor at a certain rate on the deposit amount, principal, for a period of time. Formula is I equals PRT, where I is interest, P is principal, R is rate and T is time. Take note. If rate given in percentage form need to divide it by 100. If time given in months need to divide by 12 months. Example A, N6INL deposited RM4000 at Bank Bunga Rea with an interest rate of 2% per annum. How much is the interest earned by him after a year? Based on the question, principal is RM4000. Rate is 2%, so is 2 one hundredths, and T is 1 year. Write down the formula, I equals PRT. I equals RM4000 times 2 one hundredths times 1 equals RM80. Therefore, the interest is RM80. Example B, Ms. Wong deposits RM10,000 in Bank Morney with an interest rate of 4% per annum. Calculate amount of interest after 6 months. Base on the question, principal is RM10,000, rate is 4%, so is 4 one hundredths. Time is 6 months, so 6 twelfths. Write down the formula, I equals PRT. I equals RM10,000 times 4 one hundredths times 6 twelfths equals RM200. Therefore, the interest is RM200. For simple interest, the longer the saving period, the higher the returns. 
the higher the interest rate, the higher the returns. Second type of interest, compound interest. Compound interest is calculated based on the original principal and also the accumulated interest from the previous period of savings. Frequency of compounding on the principal can be different, for example once a year and once every three months. Formula, MV equals P open parenthesis 1 plus R over N close parenthesis to the power of NT. Where MV is matured value, P is principal, R is yearly interest rate, N is number of periods the interest compounded per year and T is term in years. Example, at the beginning of a year, Mrs. Liu Fong saves RM15,000 in her savings account with a rate of 4% per annum and compounded every 6 months. What is Mrs. Liu Fong's total savings at the end of third year? Based on the question, principal, P is RM15,000, rate, R is 4%, so for 100 equals 0.04. Number of periods the interest compounded per year, N is 2, and term in years, T is 3. Write down the formula, MV equals P open parenthesis 1 plus R over N close parenthesis to the power of NT. MV equals RM 15,000 open parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.04 over 2 close parenthesis to the power of 2 times 3 equals 15,000 times 1.1262 equals RM 16,892.44. Therefore, the matured value after 3 years is RM 16,892.44. For compound interest, the higher the compounding frequency, the higher the future value of savings. Savings with compound interest give higher returns than simple interest. Thank you Mr. David. Now I understand what are the saving accounts in bank and how to calculate the interests. By the way, I heard there is something called Islamic banking. Do you know it? Yes. In Malaysia, there are conventional banking system and Islamic banking system. Islamic banking system is based on Islamic law, Shah Rock. Risk is managed according to the agreement. Based on the principle of justice, halal, profit sharing and without usury. Does not specify rate of return on early stage of savings. The real rate of return is known upon maturity. Example. Ensik Osman saved RM20,000 in a savings account in an Islamic bank, according to the principle of Wadia for a year. By the end of the year, he received a sum of RM20,500 as a return from the savings. An additional RM500 is a IBA, gift, from the bank. Calculate the percentage of IBA obtained by Ensik Osman. Percentage of IBA equals RM500 over RM20,000 times 100%, equals 2.5%. Actually, other than saving your excess money in bank there is another option. You can use your money for investment. Investment? What is investment? This is the first time I hear this. It's okay, you will understand it very soon. Investment is a step for future returns in the form of current income and capital gains. There are also three types of investment. First, shares. Shares is issued by a company for purposes of raising capital. A person purchases shares from a company as the owner of the company under certain conditions. Shareholders will receive dividends and capital gains as returns. Second, unit trust. Trust fund controlled by a unit trust company managed by qualified professional manager in the field of investment. Collect money from investors. And invest money in various potential companies. 
with aim of providing returns that benefit investors. Thirdly, real estate. Investments on immovable assets. For examples, houses, shops, land and others. Consider factors, economic situations, income generating capabilities, for example rent, location, property prospects in future. Receive investment returns in the form of renting and capital gains. Now, let me introduce you return of investment ROI. ROI is a ratio of profit or loss, derived from an investment. ROI equals total return divided by value of initial investment, times 100%. The return of unit trusts are dividends, bonus shares and capital gain. While return of real estate, land, house and commercial lot, are rent or capital gain. For unit trust example A, on January 2018, Quan City invested 3,000 units valued at RM2 per unit in Armana Saham Bumi Putra. For the financial year ending December 31, 2018, ASB paid a dividend of 5%. On January 1, 2019, Quan City sold all the shares she owned at 2 Ringa 20 sen per unit. What is the ROI for Puan City? Initial capital equals 3,000 units times RM2, equals RM6,000. Dividend equals 5% times initial capital, equals 5 over 100 times, 3,000 units times RM2, equals RM300. Increase in share price equals 2 ringgit 20 sen minus 2 ringgit equals 20 sen. Capital gain equals 20 sen times 3000 units equals RM600. Total return equals dividend plus capital gain equals RM300 plus RM600 equals RM900. To find out ROI, we need to write down the formula. ROI equals total return divided by value of initial investment, times 100%. Equals RM900 divided by RM6000 times 100% equals 15%. Therefore the ROI for Puan City is 15%. For real estate example A, Ensik Yusuf bought a shop lot at a price of RM 600,000 on January 1, 2017 in Bangui. He paid 10% of the shop lot's purchase price of RM 60,000. The shop lot was rented from January 1, 2017. On December 31, 2026, he sold the shop lot for RM 1,300,000. The loan amount still owned to bank was RM 486,000. Meanwhile, the amount that has been amortized to the bank was RM 450,000. Other charges involved in the sale and purchase transactions are as follows, legit cost, RM 15,000, stamp duty, during sale and purchase, RM 15,000, agent's commission, RM 18,000. Total rent collected is RM200,000. Calculate ROI obtained by Ensik Yusuf. Total rent equals RM200,000. Capital gain equals RM1,300,000 minus RM486,000 minus RM60,000 minus RM15,000 minus RM15,000 minus RM18,000 minus RM450,000 equals RM 256,000. Total return equals total rent plus capital gain equals RM 200,000 plus RM 256,000 equals RM 456,000. ROI equals total return divided by value of initial investment times 100%. Equals RM 456,000 divided by RM 600,000 times 100% equals 76%. There are some factors that affect ROI on real estate. 1. 
The economic situation. Country's good economic situation, demand will be higher and the real estate prices will increase. 2. Location. Properties located near a vastly developed city center have higher prices compared to properties in rural areas. 3. Political situation. A stable political situation will increase demand and increase the real estate prices. Factors to be considered before making an investment. 1. Potential investment risk. The uncertainty that losses may be incurred from the investments made. 2. The level of return. Profit enjoyed by investors from investment. 3. Liquidity aspect. Relating to how soon the investment or savings could be cashed out. The summary table are shown as follow. There is a strategy called cost averaging strategy. It is a technique commonly practiced by investors, who invest in shares with a fixed amount for a certain period, regardless of stock market conditions. It helps investors to buy shares with a lower average cost. Total number of shares owned will be higher within the same investment period. Average cost equals investment amount divided by number of share units owned. The advantages are 1. Able to take advantage of unit price changes. Stock price decrease. More units of shares can be purchased. Indirectly helps investors to have more shares in long term. Average cost of a share unit reduces in long term. 2. Not influenced by emotions. Invest consistently on a periodic basis the same amount of money, without being influenced by emotions caused by share price fluctuation. 3. Lower the risk of loss. Help investors to purchase based on current situation, avoid loses associated with lump sum investment. Example A. Mrs. Esther Wong invests RM20,000 to buy shares and accumulates the shares in the designated months. Juan Linda invests a lump sum of RM20,000 to buy Paylita Company shares at RM2 a unit. Calculate the average cost per unit and the number of shares owned by Juan Linda and Mrs. Esther Wong. For Juan Linda, Total shares equals RM20,000 divided by RM2 equals 10,000 share units. Average cost per share equals RM20,000 divided by 10,000 share units equals RM2. For Mrs. Esther Wong, total shares equals 10,626 share units. Average cost per share equals RM20,000 divided by 10,626 units equals RM1.88. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our channel. And if you got any question, can comment below.